So we will uh, uh, speak about leadless pacemaker indication in uh, 2023. If we look at the 2021 AUSC guidelines on cardiac pacing and CRG, we find a two class indication, 2A and 2B. Leadless pacemaker can be an alternative to a uh, transvenous pacemaker when there is a problem with vascular access or high risk of uh, uh, infection such as previous infection or uh, hemodialysis. When there is an indication of VVI uh, pacing, we can also discuss the implant of uh, uh, leadless pacemaker using shaded decision and considering life expectancy. This is the guidelines. What is a, a leadless pacemaker? This is, uh, is 19 percent smaller than a transvenous pacemaker, is a self-contained generator and uh, electrode system implanted directly into the right ventricle. Uh, the device uh, is implanted via femoral vein, transcatheter approach. It requires no chest incision or subcutaneous generator pocket. The primary advantage of a leadless pacemaker is the elimination of uh, several complications associated with transvenous pacemaker and leads as pocket infection, hematoma, lead dislodgement, and uh, lead fracture. Uh, the leadless pacemaker also has cosmetic appeal because there is no incision or visible uh, pacemaker pocket. Uh, leadless pacemakers provide only, uh, only single chamber ventricular pacing and uh, lack of uh, defibrillation capacity. Leadless pacemaker may be uh, suitable for patients with permanent atrial fibrillation with bradycardia or bradycardia tachycardia syndrome, or those who uh, unfrequently uh, require pacing. Leadless pacemakers are inappropriate for patients who require dial chamber pacing, such as uh, patients with certain forms of uh, AV block or sinus node dysfunction. Complication may occur related to femoral vein access or uh, need device repositioning there is moderate risk of cardiac perforation with subsequent uh, pericardial effusion. Current uh, leadless pacemakers are designed to be uh, compatible with magnetic resonance imaging, and battery life uh, is approximately five to uh, 15 years, comparable that a transvenous pacemaker at end of battery. No, uh, we will be uh, more practical and look at the uh, hearts. Uh, the green means a good indication, the red is contraindication, and the yellow can be discussed. So the first, the three first uh, lines uh, are reasonable indication and uh, pacemaker. Uh, I remember the elective indication of leadless pacemaker as uh, upper venous access problem the high risk of infection and uh, tricuspid valve uh, dysfunction. The red hearts mean contraindication. In the category, we find patients with mechanical tricuspid valve and uh, classical indication for CRT. For other patients, yellow hearts, the lead lace pacemaker may be considered as an alternative to transvenous pacing and considering the age of the patient and uh, the choice of the patient uh, himself. So I would like to uh, share this uh, uh, practical clinical case. This is a man, uh, 53 years old, with cardiovascular risk factors, hypertension, diabetes, dyslipidemia. In his uh, medical history, we find uh, chronic kidney disease, uh, stage five, and the hemodialysis, enolic cirrhosis. So this patient presents two episodes of syncope leading to emergency room consultation. Uh, third episode during monitoring highlighting parox paroxysmal high degree AV block. In your opinion, which the following pacemaker may be indicated for these patients? Transvenous dial chamber pacemaker, transvenous atrial single chamber pacemaker, transvenous ventricular single chamber uh, pacemaker, leadless VVI pacemaker, or leadless VDD pacemaker. In your practice, or in your what? your best indication for this patient. So I will give you some uh, element of response for this uh, question. Vote. 
okay? Young, relatively young patient, hypertension, diabetes, but he is on hemodialysis and paroxysmal AV block, symptomatic. Yes. Now, this is the purpose of uh, the question. Okay. So, leadless pacemaker um, is uh, indicated to eliminate, eliminate pocket related complications as infection, hematoma, erosion, and to eliminate it also lead uh, complications as fracture, insulation, venous thrombosis, and obstruction, and also a tricuspid regurgitation. For our patient, uh, this, this patient is at high risk of infection because he's on hemodialysis and the diabetes, two factors for infection. And the capital of uh, venous will be also used when we uh, implant uh, a transvenous uh, pacemaker. So leadless pacemaker may be a good option for this patient as indicated in uh, guidelines of uh, uh, European Society of Cardiology. But with the VVI pacemaker, we, ha we have some risk of uh, asynchronism and uh, pacemaker syndrome. So there is a new option is the VDD uh, leadless pacemaker. And uh, the advantage of this uh, VDD is to, uh, to, to, to get 89% uh, of uh, uh, synchronism. This is a good uh, 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 number. And uh, this patient, uh, he needs AV synchrony maintenance because, because he is young. And when we uh, should to, to, uh, to implant lead less pacemaker, this pacemaker may be uh, VDD. And uh, in uh, the paper of uh, ERA on uh, practical uh, consideration of uh, pacing uh, and uh, with uh, leadless pacemaker, there is indication when we have uh, possibility of synchronous capability that we should implant uh, leadless with AV synchronous. And this is with, uh, with the done. This is the patient implanted with the VDD uh, leadless pacemaker and as you uh, Look, there is synchronism be be between atrial and uh, ventricle. What's uh, the mechanism to enable atrial ventricular synchronization? Is it the temperature based synchronization, impedance based synchronization, accelerometer based synchronization, atrial EGM based synchronization, or respiration, respiration based synchronization? Have you some idea about the mechanism? how uh, a leadless pacemaker function to, to get uh, synchronization. En fait, uh, if, uh, Micra IV, the concept is done by Metronic, can detect the mechanical movement of a beat in one chamber of the heart, which is the atrium, and then pace another chamber where Micra is implanted, the ventricle. So atrium and ventricle beat uh, are uh, synchronized. And in this, uh, we use this uh, accelerometer-based algorithm. So we can detect the tricuspid valve closure, which is the beginning of ventricular systole, the pulmonary valve closure, and the ventricle uh, systole. And using this, we can detect the atrium and anticipate the uh, pacing of uh, RV. But some patient a number of patients need to be screened if can uh, benefit of uh, this uh, synchronization. So we need other um, technology improvement to get the 100% of uh, AV synchronization. My take home message is leadless pacemaker are offered in first intention in case of an anticipated difficult vascular access or history of complicated transvenous pacemaker a pacing indication in patient with permanent atrial fibrillation or an anticipated high risk of infection. But leadless pacemakers are more and more considered in patients with otherwise standard indication for single or dial chamber 
pacemaker implant, particularly when low pacing percentage is expected. The rationale behind this is that, contrary to the transvenous VVI DDD device, this less pacemaker offers the advantage of avoiding endovascular leads. And thank you for your attention.